seems healthy, right? We we have healthy for for everyone here on the call. Super healthy. Great. Absolutely. Yeah, this is great. This is fun. Yeah, it took us a bit. Uh, not not too crazy to set this up. I'm just refreshing right now to make sure that YouTube says that we're happy uh, as we as we start pushing out. So welcome everyone. It says we are live. In fact. Uh, so thank you for joining our monthly Azure Functions webcast, a very special one. Usually we do it from the Channel 9 studio, but given the state of things, uh, this month we decided to do it from our own houses. And I think it goes without saying Alex Karcher wins uh, for the best work from home environment, Alex. Uh, <laughs> what is, the, you just have, you've got like a full set. Is this just by chance that you have like a, a, a streaming background <laughs> so ready to go? We... I, I happen to run another Microsoft centric uh, show. We run a podcast, a Microsoft news podcast out of the house. So I was able to just uh, co-opt this set, um, kind of move stuff around on the shelves to make it look a little bit nicer. That's great. Awesome. Well, we'll get right into it then. And hopefully you're all safe as well and enjoying this nice, uh, relaxing webcast. We'll, we'll start with some intros. So if this is the first time you joined a webcast, welcome. Uh, I imagine many of you in looking at chat saying hello. We've got a few MVPs. We've got some folks from the team honor it as well. And Alex as well. That's the first chat message from <laughs> Alex. <laughs> uh, so I'm Jeff Holland. I'm a PM on the functions team. Uh, I'll let we, one of you decide who's going to introduce themselves first. Take it away, Eduardo. Um, I'm Edward Laureano, uh, also on the Functions PM team. I don't have a fancy decoration set like Alex does. By the way, I still remember when he got the, the lights behind him and used to be in his office, but I guess he moved it to his official podcast studio. Oh, yeah. You did used to have those lights in back when we had like offices before we were all cool with open workspace. Like, yeah, those that was in your office. Yeah, and this is actually we we have two of these light up trees, and this is the the bigger, fuller, more exciting one, and the sadder, smaller one is is behind me on the other side, and I that see. was the one that was in our offices. Makes sense. All right, Alex, I'll let you introduce yourself too, even Ooh. though I've made you, you've already it got introduced in chat as well. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm I'm Alex Karcher. I'm also one of the PMs on Functions. Um, I right now work on premium plan networking and uh, a little bit of scalability. Great. Perfect. So we've got chat here. I can see folks. And yes, yeah, I think I mentioned in the last webcast, my wife, uh, well, she was expecting. Uh, we've had our, our child now. Uh, welcome <laughs> into the family. Our beautiful, we haven't named it. We just call it the child. Uh, so no, my wife is still expecting. Uh, but for those who haven't joined before, we've got a few updates. We'll, we'll share what's new, what's coming. Uh, I don't think we have a demo, but we've got enough stuff to kind of show and poke around to, to kind of oh, make Oh, I do it. have a demo. Oh, we have a demo. Oh, snap. So we got to get right into it then. Uh, if you have questions or comments as we go, stick them in the chat window and we will answer them. Uh, we'll probably pause a little bit in the middle. So with that, we ready to go? I think yeah, we're yeah. Pop into okay. it. excited about it. All right. So here's our Azure Functions Live webcast. Look how official this is. We're like little, we're in little boxes down here too. Uh, okay, so first things first. Oops, I need to actually uh, progress the thing. We're gonna talk about what's new. So a few things that are new we wanted to flag. The first one, uh, this is actually pretty exciting because we just talked about this a little bit uh, last month where Byron came on and he demoed all the Portal UX. And the biggest question was, when is the Portal UX coming? It's now out there in preview form across the globe for everyone. So if you go to the Azure portal and you open a function app, you should see a little banner that says, do you want to try the new experience? And anyone can try it now. So that's great. Super fast. Uh, and great response already from what we've seen. This next one, Eduardo, I'm going to have you take this one away. And I think you even want me to show some other stuff. What is custom handlers? This is something we, we actually haven't even teased before that just dropped earlier today. What do you have to yeah, share here? Um Oh, no, um, it's it's exciting because since we've launched Azure Functions and we tried to launch with tons of languages, as we all know, so we have no JavaScript, we have Java, we have, of course, F Sharp, C Sharp, Python, PowerShell. But then every time we go present somewhere, it's like, when are you going to have, and they always pick the language you don't expect. When are you going to have R, support for R language, or Go language, or Rust I even got the question of C++, when would you support C++? And our language model that we support today, the language extensibility model, we had one language at a time and we evolved due to customer demand, but we never had a generic way for it to bring your own code. 
or you could have code that's legacy code. You want to transform that in serverless and just take advantage of the way we scale and our triggers and bindings. And that's exactly what this feature is about, is you can build and if you can switch over, the doc has a nice uh, diagram on it, um, still leveraging the functions host and the way that we trigger your code and we do binding, we can kick off your own code that's running. All you have to do is implement a little layer to act as a web server so that communication will be over HTTP and that piece of code can run. And again, that piece of code can be C++, Rust, Go, any any of the languages that we don't have or some other executable or something that you have already compiled some map that you had before. So it's really exciting. It's, it's, it's sort of an early preview type of feature. We're putting it out there because we want to collect the feedback, but something that we heard uh, people wanting. So it's really cool that we're releasing it. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, shout out to, to Matthew Henderson, PM, and Prognon Dev. They're the ones that actually did the work on it. We just, the three of us just take the credit on this webcast. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. There's way more people uh, who, who really deserve the credit. And I noticed even Anthony tweeted already how he, he has some PHP code that's running as an Azure function now. Uh, he's got a real-time chat app with PHP. So very cool to see how it's more flexible now for folks to write these handlers, these language workers using this new custom handler. So definitely check that out. Okay, this one, I've already seen some folks spoiling this in chat. I'm assuming Honored, are you to blame here? Uh, but Python 3.8 dropped last Friday. Uh, so this puts us up to speed with the latest and greatest of the Python versions. But who knows, every time I blink or look the other way, there's a new version of something. But as far as I know, 3.8 is as far as it's production ready right now. Uh, so this is great to see. Just I th We've talked about this before. I think, Eduardo, maybe it was even last month, you were like, we're really trying to make sure that we're we're iterating very quickly as we go to stay up to speed with the latest languages. And the time between you know Python 3.6 to Python 3.7 and Python 3.7 to 3.8 is significantly smaller each revision as we're, as we're building that muscle and just moving super fast on these languages now. Yeah, and worth, worth calling out that when we do those releases, it's, it's all of it. So you'll be able to get the drop down from the UX, it supports from the CLI, you can do it from Visual Studio Code. So it's the whole ecosystem around functions, not only the functions runtime when you do those releases. So it's pretty impressed. Uh, kudos to, to the engineering team and all our partner teams that work with us to just get all these releases now. Like it's, it's really working well. It's like a well-oiled engine to get versions out now, which is really something great to see yep perfect uh i think this might be the last thing we have on the slide let me look it is uh so this is around java uh so recently if you're using the java tooling like java maven primarily maven we now have new tags for you to hang in to say like hey i also want a docker file and i want to be able to deploy this java app into a Docker container and publish it. I myself was using this uh, earlier in the week to take some Java code, stick it in a Docker container, run it in Kubernetes along Kata, run it in the premium plan in a custom Docker image. Uh, so this is just some nice tooling to make that even easier that is now available for you all to try with that new Docker tag. So that's all it's new. Uh, other announcements, and I, I will do this. I noticed, because uh, I have notifications floating around here. Nice, nice shout out. Gold Naz from Channel 9 just tweeted that she's so proud of us that we were able to follow her incredibly well-written instructions on how to set all of this up to the little title thing that you all see up here. Uh, so fantastic support from the Channel 19, even it's more remote today. Uh, so if you happen to be watching nine minutes in, there's your shout out. Uh, the other one, this is big news. Maybe Eduardo, I'll have you talk to this one. Uh, there was a recent analysis that got shipped from our good friends at Forrester about the state of serverless. Eduardo, do you want to talk a little bit about here of what yeah. we're showing? Yeah, it's great. And um, for some of you that uh, might not know, the, the big analysts out there like Forrester and Gartner, um, they do, do publish this analysis on where, where the different cloud providers are in a scale of um, if they're leading, if they're visionaries, what capabilities they have. Um, and Forrester, for the first time, released one for function as a service. They had one traditionally for platform as a service, which sort of now it's a big world and functions got rolled into that one too. But now they felt like uh, function as a service, such a large area, they need its own wave. 
and that's the very first version of the function's wave. So, so uh, and the way this works is they work through cloud providers and they, they go into deep level of details asking about all the capabilities. What's your developer experience like? What's What are your customers asking for? How do you respond? What's your market share? What do you have? And anyways, we worked with them and they released that report and uh, we are all super proud and, and happy to see that Microsoft's on the leaders, which is that darkest, darkest shade of gray, uh, top right in that chart is good. And that's where we are as Microsoft. And and the things that they noticed, and and it's not an accident because I feel like the team works work hard on is developer experience was one of the shout out. The fact that we have stateful functions as a service as a built-in construct with durable functions and um, with logic apps as well, you can do workflow. Uh, and how we were able, the engineering teams can actually answer the demands from our customers uh, and build the product based on, on what customers are asking. So. Super proud moment. It's 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 huge. It's an acknowledgement where we are. I think all of us are here. We're biased. We know we have a good product in our hands. But getting that external validation from 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 an, um, such a large analyst is just great to see. Yeah, I agree. This is like if anything, this is the slide we talked about it with things like custom handler. This is such a massive, even a community moment. Like the reason I'm proud. Obviously, we have room to improve. We want to do even better. But this is such an innovative and competitive spot right now, like serverless, this cutting edge function stuff. If you look at the list of the folks who are in Analyze, every single one of them has an incredible offering. So we were really humbled to see being recognized as leaders in the space. And there's an, a, a, a mountain of folks who work in Redmond who make that possible. But it's also the community. Like it's things like this webcast where we hear back, this is what we need. This is where we need to adjust. So really something I think we can all uh, celebrate a bit uh, on that moment. Okay, so we are going to get to what's coming. I'm just taking a look at questions really quick. It looks like Onward's done a good job answering most of them around like PowerShell 7. I guess the only other question I'm seeing a lot of, which is a great question. We all came dressed to the to the appropriate measure today. Yes. <laughs> and a lot of folks want to know where they can get function shirts and stickers. I don't think I mentioned this on last webcast. There are 19 boxes. <laughs> <laughs> 19 very full boxes of t-shirts sitting currently in our Redmond office storage closet. So they are there. I'm not going to ship them. I will tell you right now, don't don't tell me to ship them to you. It's a nightmare, especially internationally. There's like this taxes and gifts and all this stuff. It's too much of a pain. But we have the shirts. We have the stickers. We will take them whenever we get the chance to travel out to conferences again. Uh, so we feel you. We, we want you to be wearing cool function stuff too. Uh, I just wish circumstances were a little bit different. Okay, so before we go to what's coming, uh, we did wanna do a little bit of a focus on networking. And one of the reasons we wanted to get Alex involved is he is a genius in networking. No, no uh, two ways around it. And so Alex, you've got a slide here. I know you have some stuff you wanna show. Which one do you wanna jump to first? You wanna do the slide first? You tell me where to go. Yeah, let's jump to the slide, and then right. I have a little demo in my own slides that I can show. So we've made a bunch of improvements to how networking works. Um, I know everybody watching has watched every single webcast we've ever done, um, but as a quick refresher, about four or five months ago, we GA'd the Functions Premium Plan, our like higher spec SKU that lets you like run instances 24-7 and connect to virtual networks. But we actually kept VNet integration in this like preview but approved for production use uh, status and it was because we were waiting for a bunch of features to ship before it became kind of complete feature complete like production ready um, and so that's all of the stuff that we have just shipped so um, we've just shipped uh, private link inbound into public preview this was like not public preview as of even yesterday the last time we showed these uh, these slides to somebody um, but this lets you uh, put your function apps inside of a, or, or I guess it lets you put a private endpoint into your virtual network to connect to your function apps as if it's another resource in your virtual network. So it gets its own like private IP. Um, we also GA'd regional VNet integration a couple of weeks ago alongside app service. Um, you can go see the whole app service blog for everything that came along with that. Um, but specifically that lets you do a bunch of, a bunch of neat stuff with your virtual network integration. Um, you can route all traffic out of your function app into a virtual network. So if you want to like restrict egress from your app, kind of pretend that it's 
um, restricted inside of a virtual network, you can now do that. Um, you can now apply uh, network security groups and user defined routes to the traffic leaving your function app by forcing all of that traffic through a virtual network. Um, so this lets you uh, kind of enforce all the security rules and then set up like hub and spoke topologies. Um, we also now allow outbound traffic from your app to reach private link resources, which is another really important kind of key resource if you're actually trying to build yourself a whole uh, network kind of isolated topology. Um, there's a whole there's a whole blog post that Christina Compi wrote on uh, GitHub.io. You can go go look for for all of the different regional VNet stuff. Um, also, alongside the GA of premium plan functions, about five ish months ago, we added support for virtual network triggers. Um, so before you could use HTTP through service endpoints and now through private link to call your function app from a virtual network. But now if you restrict your like storage or your your um, like event grid, Cosmos, service bus, um, an external storage account, um, not the one that your app is using for its like code and, and triggers and stuff, you can trigger off of that. Uh, and if we can hop back to the slides, uh, that kind of leads into one of the uh, one, of, one of kind of the only things that we can disclose for what's coming, which is the ability to put your app's primary storage account behind a virtual network. Um, this is kind of the last piece to fall into place to be able to secure your whole app's topology. Um, this is uh, for, for your app what stores in some configurations its code, what stores like the um, trigger syncs. So if you have like timer triggers, this is what keeps them all in sync so they don't run 18 times across 18 instances. Um, that's that's coming very soon. Uh, also, while I'm on the topic of premium plan, we've lit up a bunch of new regions, uh, 16 more regions for Linux, and then I think two more regions for Windows and Linux. Um, so just generally very excited to see our regional footprint expand for the premium plan. Um, so now I'm going to hop into a demo of all of this new virtual network integration stuff. And Let's we're going check to it see out. Yes. We're going to see if we can do the stream gymnastics to get this working. And you were so, messaging me very late into the evening last night, Alex. Uh, not so. a totally reasonable time in the evening. Um, so our, so this is this is all streaming correctly. Everybody is seeing my screen with my topology. Yes. Um, yep. Cool, cool, cool. So I have built a I, I have built a demo environment here. And we that, do see just a, we're we're looking at the PowerPoint uh perfect slide, not in presentation mode. I assume that's where no, you want I'm us not, to look at. Yeah, it always changes your monitor configuration when you That's great. No, I just I, I just want to sometimes people are like, I think I'm sharing this other monitor, so we can see it great. Cool. So I have two function apps that I've deployed. One of them is gonna be kind of my front end in this topology, and this function app allows traffic in from the internet. And then the other one is going to be my network isolated function app to kind of demo all of this new network isolated stuff. So in this configuration, the general internet is able to hit that bottom function app as well as a blob storage account. And then that second function app has no outbound connection to the internet. And also the uh, service bus that I've configured to let these two function apps talk uh, is also restricted for all internet traffic. So in this demo, I'm going to send a request to my front end function app, and then it is going to use virtual network integration to send a message out to the service endpoint. And then the second function app is going to use those VNet triggers uh, that we released to read from that service bus behind the service endpoint, process the message, and then write it out to that uh, secured blob storage. So let's hop right into it. I have my, I'm, I'm over here in the Azure portal and I am in this top function app, uh, this function app here that is totally network isolated. And to just kind of walk walk through what I've configured in this function app, um, I've actually gone into the app settings here and I have set this um, function, I've set this website VNet route all setting. Um, this is the app setting that you use to force all of the traffic into the uh, virtual network integrated endpoint. You set it to one or Actually, I think you just set it to one. I don't think it'll work if you set it to true. Um, but that's the app setting that I configure. And then for this app, uh, I have configured both inbound um, access restrictions in here so that the internet can't reach this app. Uh, I've set up a rule to block all traffic from the internet. And I have set up a uh, virtual network integration into my virtual network over here into this function VNet. Um, and you can actually see in here the uh, private link preview 
um, if you were ever to go play with private link inbound. So if I go to the front end of this website here from the internet, we should not be able to reach it because I have uh, set up those inbound access restrictions. Awesome. Um, for the uh, for the purposes of this demo, though, I've set up something pretty cool, or at least that I think is pretty cool, which is you can set different access restrictions for the actual website front end and then its management endpoint, this SCM site. So I have for this demo, this SCM site uh, able to be accessed from the whole internet. So I can actually go from my laptop here on the wide world, uh, on kind of the wide internet into its uh, admin console over here into Kudu. And to show that all of my traffic is being blocked uh, over here. I am going to open up my um, my diagnostics console and I'm going to try to ping a public internet site. Um, so we have this, uh, we don't actually allow ping uh, from this endpoint, uh, but we do allow a command that we wrote called TCP ping that is going to try to open a TCP connection. It's TCP ping. Um, so if I try to TC ping like a random public website, um, it should time out. I should expect to see four timeouts and then uh, it's going to fail, or I guess it will fail four times. Um, so this is a tool that we built for debugging and that you can use for debugging your virtual network connection. Um, and I should be able to ping a storage account that I have allowed, uh, that I've integrated into my virtual network uh, in here. Um, this uh, blob that I'm going to write to, I should be able to reach that just fine. Um, and I can see I have been able to do that successfully. So I'm going to try now this whole uh, this whole kind of end-to-end scenario. So I have my function app with an HTTP connection uh, set up that I'm going to try to send a test message to. Um, and actually, before I do that, let me go over to that um, storage account so we can kind of watch it change from its old its old status of test to its new status of whatever it is that we decide to send it. So if I go into this uh, blob that I'm writing to and I go to edit it, I can see that I have my old test results of test. And if I go back to Postman and I try to send it a new message, so let's try something like, uh, I don't know, um, this, uh, this is how to quarantine a function app. <laughs> This is the, this is the appropriate demo. I I didn't realize until this moment. There's a reason we did network isolation today. So now my blob has been updated well to done. show that uh, to show that oh, information. Um, and I can actually go and show a little bit since that worked perfectly and I didn't have to spend any time troubleshooting. Um, I can go and show a little bit of the network security group that I've actually applied to get this working. So if I go to this virtual network that I'm integrated with and I go into my subnet, actually, I don't go into my subnet. I go straight into my network security group. Ha. Um, if I go into my network security group and I go into outbound security rules, um, you can see that I have three rules. I have a rule to allow outbound connection to storage, to the service bus, and then to deny connection to the internet. And for all of this, I'm actually just using service tags to allow this traffic out um, so I have set this all up to use the service tag for storage. Um, if you were to set this uh, architecture up using private link connections, uh, then you wouldn't need these um, storage tags. You could just connect straight to the private link endpoint. Um, but for this uh, for this demo, I am allowing this function app to connect to all storage accounts across all of Azure, but no other endpoints. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it in terms of virtual network integration in function apps. Uh, one other thing that I want to show while I have all of your attention is a really awesome new blog that uh, Michael Collier wrote. Uh, this is a tutorial for establishing functions private site access. Uh, this just went live a couple of days ago, and this shows you how to set up uh, this sort of topology where you have a function app with no inbound traffic allowed from the internet. Um, we just took the wraps off of the outbound traffic restrictions, so hopefully soon we will have a similar article that allows you to restrict or shows you how to set up those restricted outbound network connections. Um, but this is this is available. This is a really awesome tutorial if you're looking to play with this yourself. Um, we've also updated the networking options doc now to show all of this new stuff that we GA'd um, pretty recently. So all worth going to look at if you are interested in 
virtual network integration in functions. That's perfect. This, that, oh, go ahead, Eduardo. This is, this is great, man. One, one question, just so I understand it to you. I think um, you're the network expert, me and Jeff, not as much. <laughs> so uh, the question to ask is, we go in this is uh, we get this cost, uh, question from customers, which is, look, I love functions, but I wanted to everything to be inside my my virtual network. I want to be triggered from let's say service bus or event hub in a private network. I want the storage account that functions used to be in the private network. I, basically, I don't want anything public. Are we there now with a set of features that that you mentioned? So the last thing, we're almost there. We're 99% there. The last <laughs> thing that we're missing is that storage account that your function app uses to kind of mm -hmm. sync status across um, yep. function apps, or actually across uh, running instances in one function app. And you okay. can store your code using run from package in a VNet uh, secured storage account. So that storage account um, in kind of practice is just for like trigger syncing and timer syncing. Timer, yeah. And, and what about the monitoring story? Like would my logs stay like in a private uh, endpoint? I know the SEM endpoint you can hide like like you showed. Um, um, application insights or is there another monitoring that can be done completely inside that virtual network? Yeah, so all the, all the monitoring stuff today goes through the Azure backbone. Um, mm -hmm. So as far as anyone's concerned, that's already going through its own little private network. Very cool. This, right? is, this is super exciting. It really is. Like it all coming together and just being able to have the flexibility to set things like the network security group policies that you did. Uh, the question that came in, I think you answered it. So just clarifying it on on like what is is premium GA uh, for networking? Uh, are there pieces that aren't? And I think the answer to that might just be that doc that you showed is up to date with ev all the status of every feature. Oh, yeah, that's a perfect question. For Windows, all that stuff is GA. Uh, Private Link is in public preview. Um, for Linux, the whole stack is in the same status that uh, Windows used to be, where it's like approved for production use, but still in public preview. Um, so a bunch of this functionality still doesn't work on the Windows host or on the Linux hosting plan. Um, so specifically, if you're developing functions in Python where you have to be running on Linux, um, take a very fine toothed comb over that doc to make sure that your scenario lights up the way you expect. Perfect. And then uh, we can get a few folks interested in how you uh, uh, blurred out your subscription IDs. I think that's a yeah. Chrome slash Chromium add-in that you used. Well, yeah, I'm in I'm in Edge now. I'm in Edge Chromium. But mm. this is a tool that the CDAs built a while ago called Azure Mask. And yeah, it not only obfuscates your subscription ID, but also your email address up in the upper right-hand corner of the portal and the like report bug uh, beta flag in the Azure portal, which kind of shows the whole world that you're not quite running in the public portal. Fantastic. Um, and yeah, everything, the only, the, la the last question we'll go to before we go to what's coming, because we haven't even talked about what, what's coming still. We're almost at half an hour. Uh, it, all the, all the features that you listed for premium, the same would be true for app services. Like if folks here are using app services, all the, the status of everything is one-to-one. -one. Yeah, for dedicated app, yeah, for dedicated plans for, or I guess app service plans, however you want to refer to it, running on PV2 instances. Um, so if you're running not on PV2 instances, then you're in kind of the old region or um, gateway required VNet integration. Great paradigm. Great, perfect. Thank you, Alex. All right, we'll come back. I, I there might be a few more questions, so feel free to pop them back in. Uh, for now, though, so we've done the demo. We've given a few updates of what's new. Next is what's coming. So what are the few things that are being worked on right now? So we'll jump through this quickly. Uh, refresh Portal UX. Yeah, I know it's in public preview, but continuing to iterate on that, make it so it becomes the generally available default is, is a big call out there. I won't spend enough time on it because we did talk about that last month. Uh, scale out limits per app. We talked about this, The I think last month was the first time. This is still coming. The ability for you, regardless of plan, to say, hey, for this app, I never want to go above a certain number of instances behind the scenes on an app basis. Uh, very popular for scenario if you're trying to throttle things from getting too out of hand for a downstream system. So coming in the next few months, uh, you should see that starting to roll out. This is one we've teased for a while. It's still making a progress. OpenID Connect integration with the app service authentication. Sometimes we call it easy auth so that you can bring any OpenID provider and have it automatically make sure that tokens are provided before it actually triggers the function behind the scenes. This happens at a layer before your execution even starts. So it's a really convenient way to add authentication. 
Java 11, I think Anurad mentioned this as well. This is something that we're we're spinning up work for very shortly to have Java 11 support. And then I think we're looking really good in that language matrix that I alluded to earlier. And two that we've talked about in the past as well, durable functions for Python and durable functions for PowerShell. I think I saw Anatoly even was tweeting out uh, links to where you can start to play with some of the PowerShell bits right now. Uh, I don't have the links handy, but I, I think I saw him tweeting. So if you're really interested in one of those, uh, Anatoly, Anthony Chu, those are the two folks that I'd be poking on Twitter for for more access. Anything else on what's coming before we jump to community highlights? I think we're good. I think we're good. All right, let's do it. So one of my favorite parts of preparing for the webcast is going through Reddit, Twitter, Hacker News, whatever, uh, Medium, Dev2, uh, and finding some of the areas that we've had folks in the community build some really impressive content. And these were just the top six. There's many more that we could have added. I, I even sent a message to the team uh, earlier today just being like, this is really exciting to see. But these are a few that I wanted to call out. Um, if I know you, if you want to see the links, if you go to this link at the top, ak.ms slash function slash links, uh, it's going to take you to a list of all of these things, and then you can click to actually see the link. So this first one, Eduardo, do you want to give a quick heads up on what this is that Burke helped create out of Microsoft to learn? Well, I, I do, but before I want to say, you did not use URL list to 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 list your links. And I know. Oh, this you is might the, get in this trouble is the second Burke. month in a row. I know. Yeah. Ah! I'm just saying. A, like, a, but, but anyways. A let's, service let's powered by happy. functions that does exactly what I'm doing right here. <laughs> Uh, at least Eduardo anyway, didn't. So, at least Eduardo didn't publicly shame me on that. Yeah, I'm just gonna do the the, the plug for Burke. So there's this service called URL List that oh. can do exactly what Jeff did. It just looks better. You can reorder them. It's it's beautiful. <laughs> Anyways, and Burke when he's not doing that, um, he creates um, uh, together with some other folks, uh, Microsoft Learn module. Um, and I, I think the audience of this podcast, all of you, typically are pretty advanced functions users, but there's always people still learning, still learning how to use serverless, still learning how to use functions, still learning how to build APIs, serverless APIs. And this Microsoft Learn module tackles exactly that, how to build APIs with functions. I, I love Learn modules. They're short and sweet. It's awesome when you're confined at home and you want to learn something, pick a Learn module. It, it goes in five to 10 to 20 minutes increments. You learn a concept, you feel really good, you put it to practice. So that's one of those. Yeah, awesome. Uses API management, uses Cosmos DB. I just, it's got 12 ratings and 4.7 stars. When I see that kind of stuff on Amazon, I buy it. So uh, <laughs> check it out. This, this next one was really exciting um, that, that I, I was really pleased with. So Gwyneth has been posting a few videos. She has two right now on her YouTube channel. The first one, she goes through adding key vault integration to an Azure function, and then she spun up a second one that starts to go into using durable functions. It's really high quality content. It, it's really enjoyable to watch. Uh, and it, it was a delight to see that type of content and that quality. So a shout out to Gwyneth here. Definitely recommend you check out that channel. Uh, the other really exciting one too, well, one of the very exciting ones, Sophia Lee and Chloe Conda. And Chloe is a cloud developer advocate for us, but Sophia, uh, for Microsoft. Uh, Sophia is someone who worked with her to create this really fun blog post and experience that I just stumbled on yesterday, which is using Azure Functions to call some NASA APIs, I believe entirely in JavaScript, and then send a nice text message, a nice heartwarming text message of a picture from the earth using NASA APIs. So a fun, a fun little scenario, uh, especially given uh, I like these little happy things in, in our time oh, man. of quarantine. Chloe ma makes a bunch of super funny stuff like the the other one, the the boyfriend caller one, but yeah. now this one, this one is fantastic too. So yeah, worth checking it out. Yep. Uh, Will has a fantastic blog post on working with Cosmos DB and Azure Functions. What I liked about this one is he goes into like, here's how you can use dependency injection to make the connections even easier. Here's how triggers might look and here's the configuration options. So just a really good kind of from top level to deep dive there. Similarly, Layla had a fantastic post on dependency injection with functions, how to get started with it, how to use it. Another great blog post. And then Troy Hunt, doesn't really need to go with much introduction for Troy Hunt, for those who, who may be aware of him and his work with, like, Have I Been Pwned? Uh, fantastic individual. He, he had a great post at the end of last month around how 
Uh, Have I Been Pwned was featured on a few news sites. I think Australia News covered it. And then last week he was tweeting that some someone in Japan, like a, a major news program, covered it. So he gets these incredible spikes in traffic because everyone who's watching it, like immediate, they're like, oh, I want to know if I've been pwned. Uh, but everything just hums and it just goes perfect. And he's using Azure Functions and Cloudflare behind the scenes. And so he just has a quick post about like, hey, yeah, I got these massive unknown, like he wasn't able to prepare for it. He didn't realize they were going to promote his stuff. Um, but everything worked great. He didn't have any issues because uh, he was using serverless behind the scenes. Okay. Even if he knew, it would be crazy, right? He's on stage live. People are hitting his site, and he's the engineer on the site. Yeah, he's a one man. The, the crazy, yeah, one man, one man show doing this thing that has millions and millions of active users. It's it's pretty crazy. Uh, he really does have to leverage it. Okay, so uh, name of the edge extension. I'm going over some quick questions, and then we have one or two two last slides. Uh, da, 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 da. so what was the name of the extension again, Alex? There was someone who didn't catch the name. Uh, it's called Azure Mask, and Azure I'll put Mask. it in the uh in the chat. In the chat. Okay, great. Azure Mask. It won't let you do a link to it, but you can at least put the name. Um. Oh, someone try Android. If you tried to paste the link, it won't. It it doesn't let people paste links anymore. Um. And I believe. And oh, go for it, Alex. Yeah, and the Edge extension has since been removed from the actual like uh, Chrome like extension store. So you just go onto the GitHub uh, repository, download the unpacked extension, tell Edge you're a developer, tell yourself that you're a developer, and uh, load the extension in. Yep. Uh, and then there was just a question here from from Eric, which is, uh, uh, it looks like the portal preview is pinned to a given app per user rather than making an opt-in for every function. So it's a lot of clicks. Uh, I know Byron was on this. I know for now, especially because there was another concern, which is like, what if you start using that experience and you want to go back? And so we kind of make it so you have to opt in very often so that if you do hit a bug, where you're not stuck in that state. Uh, so it's fair. Uh, we'll definitely keep an eye on that. It'll become the default soon enough, but nothing nothing too much. We're, we're, we're always pretty hesitant, especially on portal experience to try to make that more more abrupt. And we have only a certain amount of hooks on, on the experiences here and there. So we'll pass that on to Byron though. And I, I've seen him engaged on some Twitter threads on it. Uh, there's one, I see someone saying there's something that they need to migrate to functions, but I missed the questions. Oh, it looks like it's a dashboard, a central ops dashboard that folks are looking for. I don't know if anyone has a, a, quite, uh, any thoughts on that. I think all three of us have had a chance to look at the kind of monitoring thing. So any thoughts on like, especially if you're looking from an operation standpoint, end-to-end health of an app, uh, what, what our recommended options are, and even if there's anything coming that anyone wants to call out? If, um, if you're monitoring, if the point is, and I can't see the chat window, so I apologize, but if you're on a monitoring, monitor your serverless application, then we have obviously application insights does a great job, but a lot of folks opt to use their own monitoring tools. So they use log analytics to export the logs or stream using event hub or whatnot to let's say Elk, Splunk, uh, you name it, Datadog, et cetera. So that's a, that's a common way. The other one, which I, because I don't know, I'm gonna give you both, which is some folks do the opposite. They have a more traditional architecture, VMs or PaaS, and they use functions to monitor the application to monitor for spikes and it's sort of an automation scenario where functions monitoring how your app is behaving. And in case, let's say your CPU hits a certain number, you use functions to alert someone sort of kind of like a pager duty type of scenario um, using functions to sort of monitor your system. So we right. see them both. And, and, yeah. and they actually clarified, which is super helpful. I guess the real question that they've been asking for, and I, I don't actually have anything short term is specifically for timer triggers. They were kind of looking for, imagine you have, 10 functions all on a different timer like is there a really easy way that you could have a dashboard that's like here's the five like these five go friday at 5 p.m these three go every 10 minutes uh i'm not sure of anything like obviously using things like app settings could help build that type of stuff but i don't know of any dashboard yeah. that, that pulls that off today we we haven't but it's it's um we keep hearing folks that adopt functions more and more they do have an app that do have it's not uncommon that a single app will have 50 functions or more. And once you have that many, managing and visualizing the full picture 
it's 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 not it's not as simple, right? Because you can't be scrolling on the portal down or even using the CLI. So I think it's an opportunity. It's, it's feedback that we've heard of how do you sort of compose your whole application that has functions, a lot of other stuff, all the event sources, Cosmos, data sources, and things like that that you want to put it together. I think there are thoughts on how to sort of coalesce that picture uh, within the team. Nothing too concrete right now. They recommend. I know there are external tools. Um, I'm spacing on their name right now to work um, on the serverless space. Yeah, serverless 360. That. Is that the one you were thinking of? No, um, I was um, uh, Stackery. Oh, sure, instance. sure. Stack, yep. Stackery is what comes to mind that where they play in that space of putting a picture together of your whole application, no matter how many functions we have. The closest we have to that would be the application map of App Insights that based on your logs, we rebuild the picture to you. But things like timer trigger wouldn't be shown there, at least not today. Sure. Um, but anyways, it's, it's it's a good it's good feedback. It's some, something for us to to consider. Yep. yep. And App Insights does give you a pretty good kind of holistic health view. So if you just want to see like for the 40 functions in my function app, like which ones are failing, which ones are succeeding, you can see that uh, pretty easily in App Insights. Perfect. Okay. Uh, and then I'm trying to uh, the the last one I'll go to is. Uh, some questions around things like bindings and like, uh, someone asked like, Hey, like logic apps has different connectors to different services. How does that map to Azure functions? Is there any thinking to, to bring those together? Uh, I think I'll, I'll just answer this one briefly. There are pretty big differences between logic apps connectors and our bindings. specifically, uh, how logic apps is more or less exposed is you're, you're exposing all of these actions, these individual actions, like, Hey, add a message to Cosmos DB. Uh, update this thing. And for bindings, we've been more and more trying to optimize around giving you the SDK and like figuring out how to make it as easy as possible for you to start partying with the Azure SDKs that are getting better every single day. So the, the, the answer is absolutely, we're actually working together pretty closely and pretty regularly to bring it forward, but it's not going to be something that we just snap our fingers and now everything just kind of works. We're, we're going to have to approach it to make sure that we surface those capabilities in a way that's natural to someone who's using code and we don't just necessarily surface uh, a connector as is today. So something I'd be interested to get feedback on in terms of even if the sentiment I just expressed makes sense, uh, but it's a good question. Okay. Yeah, it sounds that's like... That's yeah. we should... We should bring back the, the we we're talking before this started we should bring back the shirt that has the functions logo love and logic apps because uh like jeff said we're doing a lot more work to bring the best of both worlds together so imagine like you know in the future debugging a logic apps is great and then bringing all these rich connectors binding into functions as this idea it's, it's things that we're looking into i think we're not super close but something that we we're the same team is worth saying like as far as engineering organization and PM organization are part of the same team. So we work pretty closely. Perfect. All right. So we're, we got people hanging strong. So I hope you just have this on in the background because we're like 45 minutes in right now, but we've still got a lot of folks who are hanging around. So thank you. And hopefully this has been casual and enjoyable, but to wrap it up a few more small slides. The first one <laughs> I want to emphasize to you who are watching now, who are maybe watching the recording, we are hiring, but we're not just hiring. We're hiring like crazy right now. We have roles across a multiple, a mul what? Multiple locations, <laughs> multiple role types, uh, uh, quite a few, a few different hiring managers as well. So if you, especially folks watching this webcast, who I imagine are at least interested in functions, or you just stumbled in through the YouTube algorithm, uh, check out that link, aka.ms slash function slash jobs. I've posted the jobs that I'm aware of that are open right now. Uh, poke around, see if something works. If you have questions about what it's like to work on the team, whatever else, hit us up on Twitter. Uh, we really want to build a, a team that's strong, passionate, uh, cares about this stuff. So you who are building stuff in the community are, are incredible candidates uh, off the bat. So please, please, please consider that. Uh, and you get to work with Alex. So that's a that's a plus. Hey, as you could say, we're looking to dynamically scale the team up to an arbitrarily high number of yes. open positions. Yeah, we got to keep growing. The last one, we've actually never done this before. We've already scheduled our April webcast. So I don't have to just tell you uh, to hit subscribe, but you should smash that subscribe button and and like. Sometimes, by the way, I'm gonna go on a wreck because the people who've stuck around now they're just they muted us, so I don't even care. 
sometimes we'll schedule these like the one in April. I have the YouTube video is the placeholder sitting there. Someone will open it and they'll give it a thumbs down. Who's giving a thumbs down to this webcast? So I don't know. I don't know. I just give us more thumbs ups, people. We have 17 hey, likes right now. So for that person that's hitting the thumbs down, I think, Jeff, you should sign up to send him a shirt. Just to change the <laughs> no, the Eduardo, now everyone's going to push oh, the thumbs down button. Down. Everyone, <laughs> <laughs> if you push the thumbs up button 300 times, 300 months in a row, if you thumbs oh, up 300 months of videos, then I will send you the shirt and I will deal with the tax implications of it. Uh, hey, we're at 20 likes now. So me just mentioning this, uh, look at all these shirts I'm going to have to send. So you all have one of 300 now completed. <laughs> so keep. <laughs> so join us in April, April 15th. We, we might be home still. We might be back in Channel 9 with our good friends there. Who knows? I don't know. And Jeff, we need to learn uh, how to use our fingers to point exactly to where they need to hit. Like subscribe button yes. here, like here. You know? <laughs> Smash that subscribe button. Tell your friends. <laughs> I need to get better at this. And Gwyneth, actually, and Gwyneth, fantastic to have you join. Uh, honestly, shout out from the team. She asked, like, any requirements on jobs in terms of, like, degrees required? Absolutely not. Like, really, we, we want to have a really uh, diverse group of individuals from diverse backgrounds, diverse education, whatever else it is. So don't don't let even if you read one of those job descriptions this is one thing i'm always conscious of like sometimes you look at the list of things that we put where like yeah you know have a year or two experience in this set or the other don't let that stop you from from applying or reaching out to us like we we've definitely been surprised in the past uh, and a lot of that stuff you can learn a lot of things but that passion that care about the community that care about the product is really hard to teach so if you've got that that's a perfect start I don't know. Yeah, and it's worth saying the the jobs they range in seniority. There are some roles we we expect someone that you know, like let's say PM that has built products before, has built cloud services or things in the cloud. But some of the other ones actually, you're hiring a lot of people. They're like, if you're brand new, like you're just a developer passionate about this space and would love to work with customers and cutting edge, as you saw. First time we're doing functions of service, uh, Forrester Wave. If you want to work on something that's up and coming, still growing, passionate about developer community, big, building things that the other developers love using your technology for, that's that's an awesome place. And I can't say enough good things about the team. It's just an incredible amount of individuals on functions. So you get to work to, with a really fun group. So Perfect, perfect. Uh, okay, so the last ones, uh, looks like folks, uh, this one, I'll, I'll let someone take, uh, when, any thoughts on open API support and how to do easier open API integration, swagger integration with functions, any updates or thoughts on that one? Uh, the word is API management consumption. Um, that continues to be the word. Um, uh, up, I guess the, the only real advice is, uh, upvote the, uh, user voice item. Um, because right now there's no real plans to increase the functions like built-in open API support. Yeah, that's yeah. A, go ahead, Eduardo. Yeah, and and something we said here before we we're saying, which is actually Alex was uh, heavily involved. We did investigate how to do the Swagger support on the .NET functions, but we did not have the equivalent to the other languages like uh, on JavaScript or Python or. PowerShell for that matter. So so it's something that I think some folks even prototyped, but um, for us it's super important. It's worth saying that when we release those features, we can release something that the whole community of functions users can leverage. Like you've seen durable functions, we're now doing Python, PowerShell. So so we don't, you don't wanna do this really rich set of functionality that only works for one, one cohort or one uh, class of users of function. So so that's really the technical challenge to be super open with the community. If people have ideas on how to approach this problem in a way that cross languages works for everyone, we're, we're open to hear them. Otherwise is what Alex said. Uh, I think the right place to tackle it, building rich APIs is really a mission we partner with the API management team. So I think um, there's the best place for you to kind of like design your API or do API first and then come to functions and implement your code. Okay, sweet. Awesome. Uh, so we are, this has been 50 minute webcast. We, we now have 41 likes though. So note to self, <laughs> beg people for praise. Uh, the la I don't, I kind of hesitated saying anything. Uh, like that's the rest of the schedule. The, as I mentioned, April 15th, we'll be back, but I guess I do want to announce for the team, uh, Eduardo, 
uh, you're you're going to be trying out some new challenges in the next month. The folks might not see you on the next webcast. Uh, so I just wanted to let folks be aware. Uh, Eduardo's been an incredible, incredible power in the functions team, really from the get-go. Uh, and I'm, I'm speaking for everyone here. This is another one of those. There's a lot of folks here. So Eduardo's been an incredible uh, champion of culture, champion of quality, champion of diversity, inclusion, like all these amazing things. Uh, you've been at how long? You've been at Microsoft, Eduardo. Uh, I'm you don't have to share I'm, it. <laughs> I'm in that boat at Microsoft. Yes. So, yeah. Geez, you you I, can now. I, I you hit... can now legally uh, do a bunch of stuff as a Microsoft you can employee. Boat. Yeah. On property. <laughs> you could be drafted. Maybe that's yeah. what I need to do. I need to tell Satya to draft you, so you don't you don't go try some different challenges now. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it, so we'll we'll be uh we're really excited for Eduardo's next next thing. F follow him on Twitter. Follow him on LinkedIn. You'll you'll see what he's doing um pretty soon. But yeah, Eduardo, I guess I did just kind of walk. It felt weird to just yeah. close off our last webcast together without at least mentioning it. So. No, but, it Thanks, Jeff. It has been incredible. The webcast engagement with the community. Of course, I will um, probably blog about it uh, um, uh, the next few days. And um, but yeah, um, I've been itching to try something new. And always love functions. Did that for three and a half years, almost four years of working on functions. And it's a real good spot right now. So so it's it's always hard. It's super hard. Uh, but feel like hey now now seems the products in a, in a good place that um, I'm gonna try something else and funny enough on the personal comment is I planned a full four weeks or five weeks to do something like not work and now I'm like stranded at home like <laughs> most of you are so I'm like <laughs> so I guess my next five weeks will be gardening home projects uh, I don't know I have to think of things to do uh, now. Oh well, yeah, yeah. That's that's fantastic, Eduardo. Uh, so we, on on your very last webcast here, you got forty three likes. It's our record number uh, because everybody <laughs> loves you. And now we're going to be sitting at six likes for the history of time. But hopefully, you at least tune in. So so thanks a hey, ton, every. Uh, yeah. Now I can now I can do a like without feeling guilty because I always <laughs> feel like self promotion is bad. But now from the outside, I'm just going to be hitting like all the time. <laughs> Well, yeah, because now you can stop going into all our unbroadcast streams and, and thumbing them down. Exactly. <laughs> I'm not sending no, you any shirts. Uh, yeah. No, that's great. Congrats, I, I, congrats, I, I, Eduardo. We, uh, we, we will be in very, very much contact, I am sure. Uh, so thanks, everyone, for joining. This has been fun. It's been uh, You've been very patient as we kind of worked on this new tech stream. I think it went really smooth. Alex, Eduardo, thank you both for joining. And with that, if there's other questions, maybe you're watching the recording of this. Twitter is probably the easiest way, whether it's at Azure Functions, at, is it just at Alec Car Alex Karcher? I don't know what your Twitter handles are. Look them up. We'll, you'll I hide find nothing. Them. It's at yeah. Alex Karcher. <laughs> Eduardo also, Loriano, I'm not even going to try to, I don't know what your Twitter handle is. Go ahead, Alex. It, it, it is, yeah. We all oh, yeah. got our first and last names, all three of We're us. We're professional it's, here. Yeah. We plugged uh, that, that we're in this cool studio, but if anybody wants to listen, it's live from Building 7. A podcast plug. <laughs> I will let you do the plug, Alex, because you had such a great demo. I am subscribed to Live from Building 7, and uh, the Microsoft same way you all like that thing uh, for those left. So, so thanks, everyone, so much for joining. We'll see you on April 15th, uh, and have a great rest of your day.